here we go. <laughs> Our mission. <laughs> the Pentecostal holiness. <laughs> <laughs> right here. This is as we venture to Pentecostals in Borosa. Carlo, what do you think of the uh, Pentecostal faith? I don't know. Tell me when you're ready. Welcome to Pastor Levi's <laughs> interview. No, no, no. it's true. It's like Travis Houston. Pastor Travis Houston of Bogalusa Pentecostal Church interview. <laughs> With Miss Roxanne Sweeney. Come in. All right. Hello, Pastor Houston. How are you doing today in this fine establishment? Um, first question of today. Did you get that? Oh, stop. Hello. This is Pastor Travis Houston from the Pentecostal Church in Bogalus, Louisiana. Say hi to uh, Dr. Judith Hunt's Southern Religions class. Hey, class. All right, so today we are going to talk about Pentecostalism, and Pastor Houston is going to help us. So I guess I will start by asking the big question, how would you define the Pentecostal faith? Extreme excitement. Is there anybody here that wants to be around some live people? Is there anybody here that wants to tell your pastor tonight that I'm sick and tired of death? I'm sick and tired of lifelessness. I'm sick and tired of decay. But I'm ready for a revolution. I'm ready for a revelation. I'm ready for the God of all creation to give me life and life more. Abundantly. What KKK murder? No. No, what? Explain. The woman came here to join the KKK, but she decided she didn't want to join at the last minute. And? And so they killed her and dumped her body in some water somewhere mm. around here. In Sun, Louisiana? Yeah, look, you missed the sun right there. It's in Sun College. Shoot. Look at it. Dead bodies everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but she lived right there. Right there. <laughs> did not, uh, I was not born into Pentecost. I was introduced to it when I was 17. And uh, I guess through personal testimony, I was uh, searching and having been arrested twice. And uh, it got to the point where I said, God, I've got to have something. And uh, it just so happened that somebody invited me to a Pentecostal church. And except, uh, except for you know, just a few things I had I had heard about Pentecost, but I had never really uh, been to one. And when I first walked in, I said, "These people are crazy," but I like it. We're filming this. Are you? <laughs> well, thank you for coming. Say hi to Loyola. <laughs> Hello. Glad to have y'all with us tonight. Thank you. And this is just a little office uh, complex, a little hall right here, and then into the sanctuary. They're having a choir practice. They're filming this. I'm giving them the grand tour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is my little man here. Right now oh. in uh, hey. Montana. All right. Let's bring that on. Yeah. The kids really love it. This is where we bus our kids in. Oh, okay. And they come in and 
on Sunday mornings, and then on Wednesday nights, our kids come over here while I'm teaching in the main sanctuary, mm -hmm. our, uh, our children. So on Wednesday nights, it's just the adults in that building right. and then the... The kids are over here. Okay. Absolutely. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, let it rain, Lord! Let it rain here tonight! Hallelujah! How many of you come tonight expecting God to do a miracle? How many of you have you come tonight to see somebody filled with the Holy Ghost tonight? Hallelujah! My God, in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, rain. Rain down on us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So what exactly is the education experience involved to be a pastor? Uh, well, actually, none. You don't, you're not required to have uh, any, uh, I guess you call it formal education. Uh, I am privileged to have that. Not all uh, Pentecostal preachers are required to go to a Bible college or a seminary, but uh, I do. Uh, I do have a high school diploma, mm -hmm. and uh, I have a bachelor's degree in theology. Rain, rain, Lord, rain. So, do you have the same choir? Do you add, like, do you have new additions, or do you just keep the same people and then have auditions? Or? Um. Auditions, no. <laughs> we, we just we just pray to God that they can sing. Some can and some can't. Uh, Is it basically people come to you and they're like, I want to join the choir, and you say, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, and then you know you do have a like a not, not a really a trial session, but more or less a placement session to see what they sing and if they're a soprano or alto, tenor, bass, baritone, yeah, and uh, you know, just go from there. Hopefully, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.